Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. I'm Mark, I'm with Steve, the usual duo here, and we're getting into all the really cool new features in Final Cut Pro 10.2 that came out just a little while ago. And Steve, you're gonna take us into something about saving presets. Right, in Legacy Final Cut Pro 10, we could not only save effect presets, but transforms could also be saved as a preset, and a lot of people may not know that. Transforms like position, scale, rotation, those kind of things? Uh, yes, and even cropping, even though it's not technically a transform, you can save that as well. Okay, it's, it's one of those lists of uh, the same panel where you can change all those different attributes. That's right, so what I wanna do is take you through a particular exercise that I go through all the time where I wanna scale something to uh, a a specific portion of the frame, and I don't want to have to do that every single time. I want to create a preset for it. Okay, so anything that takes a fair amount of work, you can save and do it quickly there. Exactly, so uh, I think we just jump right. right in, look at it. Let's do it. Okay, so the key to what I'm about to show you is the anchor point location. And the, it's best to, to see this when I have the 2D transforms turned on. When it's turned on, you can see that the anchor point is centered in the middle of the frame. Yep. And that's important to understand because when you do things like change the scale, the scale is transforming around the anchor point. In fact, that's the definition of anchor point, right? The point around which a, an object or a clip rotates and scales. Exactly, now let's say I want to do ha save an effect where the clip scaled down to 50% and went up into the corner, one of the four quadrants. Mm -hmm. You would think that you would scale it and then you'd animate the position. Well, that's not the most efficient way of, hmm. of, of scaling the clip and having it appear in one of the four uh, quadrants of, of the frame. And you want it to be perfect, right? I want it to be exact. perfect, right. Uh -huh. So what I, I'm gonna go hit undo a couple times. And really what I wanna do is change the anchor point location. And there's inputs for both X and Y coordinates. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly what that is yet, but I created this handy little chart, this little Euclidean graphic chart. Ah, okay. To show you how Final Cut Pro essentially renders out the coordinate the coordinate system of whatever frame you're working on. And I assume this is for an HD 1920 by 1080 clip. Right, it's a 1920 by 1080 clip. So what you want to understand here is the zero point is right in the center. And that's where normally the anchor point would be. Mm -hmm. Okay, But if we wanted the anchor point to be, let's say, up here in the corner, we'd have to understand a little bit about the coordinate system. So for example, along the, the Z axis, that's the... the, oh, the, the X axis, right? Or, yeah, excuse me. Does that say Z? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Pretend that says yeah. X. Okay. <laughs> that was too much in the 3D world, I guess. Okay, that is the that is supposed to be an Z is X. really exciting. It's, but it is. Okay, okay so, so on the X axis. So along the X axis, this would be 1080. And if you divided 1080 by 2, you get 960, 960. right? Uh -huh. So everything to the left of the zero is a negative 960, and everything to the right of the zero is a positive, positive. 960. And if you look at uh, going up and down, this would be the... Uh, 1080 divided by two. Right, 1080 right. divided by two. So everything above zero would be a positive 540. Everything below would you go be negative. negative. So okay. it's important to understand that because now when I put in the coordinates, you'll understand what's going on. So I want this to scale 50% up into the corner. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the anchor point and um, for the X coordinates, I'm gonna type in there, I'm gonna type in 960 tab, don't worry about the position of the frame, then uh, I want to pre press tab to go to, you no, know, it's already there, 540, return. And notice where the anchor point is. It's right up in the corner. Oh, of that clip. Of that clip. Okay, it's still, it's still in the center of the overall frame, but it's the top right corner of that clip. Exactly, but. Oh, so now when you scale the clip, you're not gonna have to change, you don't have to drag it around at well, all. Well, there's one more thing, because it's not centered. So yeah. there's one other thing, you wanna change the position parameters to match the anchor point coordinate. Oh, I see. So over here, you're gonna type in nine, oops, let's see, nine, 60, tab, by 540, return. Okay. Now, everything's set up. Yeah, you've got that, that anchor point way up in the top right corner. So now what happens when I adjust scale? So what happens? It scales perfectly to that corner. The corner stays Perfect. fixed. Stays. So if you set it to 50%, it's, it should it should take up exactly one quarter of the whole space. That's right. Now, let's, let's animate this. So what I'm gonna do is move this to the beginning and I'm gonna press shift right arrow to move the play at one second in. And I'm going to set the scale at 100% by setting a keyframe there. Okay. And I want to move the playhead two seconds later by shift, right arrow, right arrow. So that's two seconds later. Mm -hmm. And for the scale, I'm going to set to 50%, 50 percent, yep. return. Now, if I play this back over two seconds, the clip scales up into the corner perfectly. Nice, nice. Now, that's great. Now, if I plan on doing this a lot, 
it's really handy to save an effect preset. And I said that you could save transforms as presets, not yes. just as effects. So yes. I'm gonna click save effect preset. I'm gonna call this um, a scale uh, upper right. Now I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on here before okay. I save. Notice that this dialogue is telling me there's keyframes applied to this clip. Yes. And that's good because when I apply it to another clip that doesn't have keyframes, it'll add the keyframes too. It. So it doesn't only save the values, it saves the keyframe values that, that Absolutely. change over time. What I want to talk about are these two options here. Um, very important to understand. Stretch to fit is normally default. So let's say you have keyframes applied to a, a, a five second clip, right? Yeah. And you have that three second move. If you apply this preset to a 10 second clip, when it says stretch, it'll do the math and figure out oh. what the what the distribution of that of those keyframes so, should be. So you're, it'll make it'll make the the animation will take twice as long if the clip is twice as long. Exactly. So it stretches to fit. That makes sense. Now that I don't sense. particularly like that. You I like that. that right? I want I want the timing. Right. Be. You set it up very specific reason to be exactly two seconds long. Right. So I'm going to click maintain. Got it. And I'm going to click save. Right now, excellent. So where'd that go? That's the, that's the next question. Um, I'm gonna open up effects browser and I have a section over here where I've saved a lot of my effect presets. Steve's client, but that's me, I'm my own client. I'm very, very good <laughs> boss to myself. But what I want you to see here is all of those transform presets are saved right there. Ah, okay. So you can choose exactly where to save them and they're in your effects browser. Right, now this is where it gets fun. Here I have a stack of clips, right? And yeah. they're, 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 no effects have been applied to them yet. Can you use clip skimming so we can see each of the separate clips beforehand? There's one, Yeah. there's another one, there's another one, yeah. So clip skimming. Great, skimming's, okay. Okay, so they're, they're four. Isn't, so, I, I just love clip skimming because it lets you see even though they're stacked on right. top. You can see so them. let's have some fun. I have these preset. So I'm gonna drop scale lower left on that clip, scale lower right on this clip, scale upper left on this clip, and scale upper right on this clip. And now we Whoa. have, yeah, I know, check it out. And not only are they perfectly aligned to the corners, they're gonna be animated? Animated perfectly. Nice. Isn't that nice? Nice, very, very cool. Yeah, and then if you wanted to, you can compound clip it and add an effect or what, what have you. But the point is, I now have these transform presets that I can apply to any clip at any time, and I don't have to like reinvent the wheel every time yes. when I want to scale into something or scale out of something. So I could see saving a bunch of those to have any time you want to do that or any kind of other animation things you make, you can have a whole set that you just drag and drop. Well, I already know what I'm going to use. We do screen captures a lot you know, for tutorials. Yeah. And if I want to zoom into zoom one part of the area. screen, I could just uh, drop that on the screen capture and zoom right to that area. Nice. It's just a fantastic, Excellent. fantastic use of the Save Effects preset. Which is one of the new features in 10.2. Absolutely. Yeah. Steve, great tip. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like this, there's a lot more information on rippletraining.com. In fact, Steve has a tutorial about all the new features of 10.2. So if you are new to 10.2, but you're used to 10.1 and earlier, that's the tutorial for you to get up to speed on all these. And there's a lot of new features. If you've never used Final Cut Pro 10, you want to check out Steve's core training uh, which is uh, uh, probably by the time this is out, is update, fully updated, <laughs> fully updated and yeah. ready to go. So you want to check that out. RibbleTraining.com. And uh, if you want to keep uh, up to speed on what we're doing here, we also do other weekly shows. There's a Motion Under 5 and a Final Cut Pro Under 5. You can find about all that stuff at RibbleTraining.com under Get Inspired. And you can also follow us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And you'll find out about all this stuff. So we give a lot of good info away. So I hope you found that useful. Steve, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.